In the previous video, we saw that the Lux-Swindorf scheme is not appropriate to compute discontinuous solutions because no physical oscillations may appear. In this video, we're going to see how to fix this problem. We're going to focus on upwind schemes for solving hyperbolic conservation equations. More specifically, we're going to discuss the Godunov and row schemes. Upwind schemes must rely upon characteristic theory to determine the direction of propagation of information, and thus the direction required to discretize spatial derivatives. To study transport equations of multiple variables, let's consider first the one-dimensional scalar wave equation studied in the first lecture. We saw that the first order upwind scheme can be written as follows. We can write it in a similar way if we consider a system of equations. The generalization to a system of conservation loss is straightforward. Here A is the Jacobian matrix. To make things clearer, let's focus our attention now on the 1D Euler equations. Please stick with me because this part is extremely important to understand the Riemann solvers. We now present a brief discussion on the Euler equations in one dimension. The Jacobian matrix can be computed by first expressing the flux vector in terms of the conserved variables. If we introduce the total specific enthalpy, capital H, in the sound speed A, we can rewrite the Jacobian matrix as follows and express the Euler equations in quasi-linear form. The new system of equations is strictly hyperbolic. That means that the matrix A has three real and distinct eigenvalues, lambda 1, 2, and 3, and is diagonalizable. That means that it can be decomposed as P times lambda times P minus 1. These three matrix take the following form. Let's discuss now the Euler equations in characteristic form. The general form of the equation defining a characteristic curve is dx dt equals lambda, where lambda is an eigenvalue of the Jacobian matrix A. An invariant is a quantity that is transported along a characteristic curve in the plane xt and remains unchanged. Since the corresponding invariant is constant along the characteristic, it satisfies the following equation. The quasi-linear system that we just derived has three real eigenvalues, and therefore it has three distinct characteristics. It can be shown that the invariants can be expressed as differential relations which have to be integrated along the corresponding characteristic curves. In the case of an isentropic flow, we obtain the following expressions. These relations can be used to derive the exact solution of the shock tool problem that we want to solve numerically. In the shock tool problem, also called Riemann problem, two gases are separated by a thin membrane inside a tube. The two gases are at different thermodynamic states, and when the membrane is broken, waves travel along the length of the tube. We have seen that for a linear system of n hyperbolic partial differential equations, the Riemann problem consists of n waves propagating with speeds given by the eigenvalues. For the 1D Euler equations, the Riemann problem has in general three waves known as shock, contact discontinuity, and expansion wave. What type of waves are actually present in the solution will depend on the initial conditions of the Riemann problem. When we break the membrane, the discontinuity between the two initial states breaks into leftward and rightward moving waves, which are separated by a contact surface. Each wave pattern is composed by a contact discontinuity in the middle and a shock or a rarefaction wave at the left and the right sides. All the available combinations produce four wave patterns. 
In fact, a fifth pattern is also possible in theory, and it contains a vacuum state, but we're not interested in this case. But why did I show you all of this? It's because Godunov's brilliant idea is based on this exactly problem. He proposed to treat two adjacent cells in a grid as a shock tube problem. Basically, in his method, the conservative variables are considered piecewise constant over the mesh cells at each time step, and the time evolution is determined by the exact solution of the Riemann problem at the intercell boundaries. Unfortunately, to obtain the exact Riemann solution in every cell boundary at every iteration can be quite costly, involving Hobson Newton iterations and complex nonlinear functions. For this reason, we prefer to use approximate Riemann solvers. The rule approximate Riemann solver is a classic linear solver based on the Godunov scheme. It involves finding an estimate for the intercell numerical flux at the interface between two computational cells. In the following, we are going to solve the Euler system of partial differential equations using Rose upwind scheme. Rose approximate solver is based on a simple and ingenious idea. The Riemann problem at interface j plus one half is replaced by the following linear problem. Here, the matrix A hat is a constant matrix defined on each interface. The Riemann problem in this case is easily solved. The matrix A hat is defined in such a way that the following conditions are satisfied. This matrix is diagonalizable and has real eigenvalues. Therefore, the hyperbolic character of the initial equation is conserved, and A hat can be decomposed as p hat lambda hat p minus 1 hat. The linear Riemann problem is consistent with the initial problem. The numerical scheme is conservative. This condition implies that if u and v are connected by a shock, the solution of the approximate Riemann problem coincides with the exact solution. A remarkable property of this matrix is that it is exactly equal to the local Jacobian by replacing the variables rho, u and h with the corresponding rho's averages. The rho flux in the general conservative form can be written like this. Let's see now how it is implemented in our code. The Python script is similar to the one used to solve the 1D Euler equations with the Lax-Vendroff scheme. But this time, I added some functions. So here I compute the primitive variables, the flux vector, the conservative variables, and here is the main function, where I compute the row flux. So how do you do that? We need first to compute the row averages, so these averages here, are computed in this part. Then we need to compute the row matrix and to compute the row matrix we need p hat, lambda hat and p minus 1 hat, that's where we compute them. And at the end we compute the flux phi. So right here we are computing this equation. We define some parameters. We define the initial conditions. Right now we're doing the configuration one. We're solving for the sorts problem. We plot the initial solution if you want. And then here we solve the solution in time. So we, we solve this equation here, right here. Then we plot the solution. Let's see now the result. Remember that this program can be downloaded from my website. Note that we no longer have the unphysical oscillations. 
In the last video, we saw that the lag Swindorf scheme was not appropriate to compute discontinuous solutions. In this video, we show that the rose upwind scheme takes into account the hyperbolic character of the system, allowing a much better numerical treatment. Keep tuned and don't forget to like the video and follow the channel.